I just feel like there are a few things that you're mulling over in your mind for the month of February. And I feel that it is very heavily relationship focused, okay? So I almost feel like for some of you, you might have uh, trouble getting somebody out of your mind. You might be heavily thinking about another person. I also feel this uh, energy about you, um, somebody from your past or somebody that you were once connected to, you never understood them. Um, and then I feel like the month of February, um, something is coming in that is allowing you to understand this person better, or you're having some types of um, epiphanies that kind of shift your perspective a little bit. It's not drastic, it's not drastic like the tower, but I feel that you're reminded of this person for the month of February, and I feel that you are heavily thinking about them, and you're heavily thinking about the, the qualities, the quirks about them that you might not have understood before. I feel that it's making a lot more sense to you. Okay, so um, let me just talk a little bit about the, the, the scene that I was seeing when I was shuffling the cards. And, you know, once again, we have a lot of cross watchers nowadays that are watching the videos for, uh, they might not be the Librans, but they are watching for the Libras that they have in their life. So take this how it resonates and just know that energy is interchangeable. And uh, you could be either or in the scenario that I am reading for, okay? So, um, first of all, I, I see this scene, and it looks like um, a street-side cafe. Very informal street-side cafe, and it looks almost like it's in Paris, okay? Like a Parisian coffee shop. And there are um, those uh, metal chairs and metal tables, cute little tables for like two. Uh, kind of laid out on the sidewalk and people could just, you know, sip on their coffee and have their lunch or have their brunch while looking at the people passing by. So I kind of see um, a little bit of an upscale coffee shop and uh, it's in a very busy square. There's a lot of people passing by and I see this couple. They, they seem like they're clearly a couple to me. Very young couple, probably in their early 20s. The wom woman She's really, really attractive. Well, they, they both look really attractive. They both uh, are dressed very well. The woman is wearing a white blouse, and she's wearing, you know, high heels, and she has her hair done, she has jewelry on, she has makeup on, and I believe she has, like, um, light, light, light curly, short, blonde hair. She looks very stylish, like she could, you know, either work for, as like a fashion editor or something very, um, like she, she just looks like she's dressed really, really well. And they're sitting at a table and there's white uh, tablecloth, okay, so already you know it's kind of like an upscale kind of um, a place. And right next to her is this man that she's talking to and it seems like they're dating. Um, he's wearing um, a twill like blazer. He's wearing a uh, polo shirt underneath, and he's wearing khaki pants. And you know he's wearing like the loafers. So these two look just kind of like like a perfect match. Okay, on the surface they look really really attractive. They look like they could be fashion models. They just look really stunning. And he's talking to her. He's telling her about some event while he's eating and he has like a fork in one hand, a knife in the other and he's cutting his food up and he's talking to her very excitedly about something. And uh, she's half listening, okay? She's half listening. She's sipping her cappuccino or her coffee and while he's talking, she kind of looks past him, like past his shoulders. And what's really drawing her attention is this other man that is, um, he's not in the cafe, he's kind of like on the outside, sitting um, behind the man that she's dating. He's got long hair, he looks very, dish um, he just doesn't look, you know, kempt like a fashion model, the way her boyfriend looks. But he's an artist, he's a street artist. And he draws like city scenery of uh, Paris, he draws like the tower, he draws like the, the cafes with the busy people, so he people watches. 
and uh, she's looking at him, she's looking at the artwork, and she's kind of admiring, admiring the artwork. And I feel like, you know, while her boyfriend is talking, um, she, she's not invested in the conversation. She's half-heartedly invested in that present moment with her boyfriend. And I just frankly feel a little bit of a sense of boredom, okay, coming from her. Um, I feel that this energy might be you, okay? And so what I'm feeling is this. I'm sensing that there might be a relationship in which on the surface, on paper, um, you guys look almost like a perfect match, okay? Like a perfect match, a match made in heaven. Um, you guys like the same things. You guys like have mutual friends. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people that might um, have like, you know, uh, graduated from the same school, graduated from the same university, attended the same prep school, attended the same med school, attended the same law school, and then just naturally you found yourself together, going through, you know, these big major uh, life-changing moments together. And then you feel almost as if, oh, that's the one. We're meant to be together. We're meant to be together uh, for till eternity. And keep in mind that, you know, the two, the, the two people in the, this scene, they're very, very young, like in their um, early 20s, which indicates to me they might not know themselves very well. And I don't want to offend, you know, 20-something-year-olds. But I just feel like they haven't really dated enough. They haven't really, you know, learned what love really means. And so it's kind of like a relationship where they might have, um, you know, graduated from college together, gone off to law school together, and life circumstances just um, worked out in a way where they're constantly circulating around the same social circle or they just inevitably run into each other because of the networks they're involved with. And then it, it might seem like fate, okay? When in fact, it's just, you know, it's a numbers game. So I feel like there's a situation here where you are putting a lot more meaning into the situation than it warrants. Does that make sense? So I'm sensing as well, um, for those of you who might have been together with, another, with a person for a long period of time, there's this period of kind of like boredom, okay? Wanting to see what other options are available, wanting to kind of get out there and um, explore relationships, date other people, uh, wanting to have more fun, wanting to have more chemistry, wanting to have more passion, wanting to feel desired, wanting to feel alive again. So I do feel this sense of uh, mundane, this sense of I wish there was more to this. I wish things were a little bit different, okay? Um, so, so that's what I'm, I'm sensing based on that, um, the, the image that I saw, okay? Let me talk a little bit about the cards. Um, I feel like the cards are kind of split this way. It's like a zigzag, okay? Zigzagging. That's what it feels like to me. And so let me talk about this person here. Um, I see the two of you looking at each other. Okay. I feel like, and this is where I don't know which one you are. Okay, so the energy, once again, can be vice versa. Pick whatever side you resonate with as a representation of your energy. So this is the couple. Okay, and this is the couple where I feel like, you know, you, you thought it was fate. You thought it was like, wow, what are the odds that we constantly run into each other? We constantly know the same people. It just happens that your social circle might, might also dictate who you run into, who you connect with. And so what seems like fate is in fact just like a numbers game, the lottery regarding the social circle and the networks that you are involved in. Um, so what we have here is this temperance card as well as the eight of crystals, okay? This is one person. This person is very colorful. This person is like, you know, the, the wild animal, the zebra. Um, 
blend into their environment. Ze zebras have the stripes so that they can blend into their environment, okay? So this is someone who's kind of like a social chameleon, who likes to be uh, with the herd, who likes to kind of like live life a little bit vicariously, who wants a little bit more passion, a little bit of excitement, a little bit of fun, and a little bit of adventure in the relationship that they're in. Um, for some of you, this could be you, where you want to travel, you want to see the world, you don't want to live in one sedentary place, you want to change location, you want more out of your life, okay? And then I'm seeing the other person is the Eight of Pentacles, the buffalo or the bison, okay? And this is someone who's very, like, um, stuck to the ground, okay? The way this animal is, it's very heavy, it's very anchored, and it's very grounded, Okay, just look at it. It has like fear, sheer, brute force, and strength, okay? This is somebody who's like, um, their existence is very quiet, okay? So they're, they're not like, um, they're not going, going to go to the grocery store all decked up with their nails done and their hair done and their makeup done just to go to the grocery store. They're going to go to the gym in like a torn t-shirt and, you know, old shorts and not care because they're just working out and they don't care. And this is also somebody I feel like the way they live their life is very admirable, is, is what I'm sensing. Um, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of, um, they have financial resources, but they never flaunt it. They never talk about how much they have. They never, you know, care about the nice cars, the, um, the big engagement rings, the, the designer handbags, getting their nails done, getting their hair done, having like the, the expensive, you know, um, watch or even the designer suit. So they could ma be male or female. The bottom line is they're very down to earth. They don't like to flaunt. They don't like to uh, be flashy. The way they live their life is it's a very quiet existence. They're content with everything that is in their life. And I feel in a way that the other person might regard this person as uh, lacking in spontaneity, lacking in um, excitement. So somebody here is thinking like this relationship might be a little bit dull, might be a little bit boring. This person is not very spontaneous. This person is not very um, exciting to be around. Okay, so I feel like there one person is really wanting travel, adventure, excitement, newness, and the other person could be a little bit more of a homebody. Um, they could be content with very, very little. So I feel like there is a conflict of interest here when it comes to how the two of you like to be entertained, how the two of you uh, want to explore life. How the two of you can find, you know, emotional fulfillment with the things that you do. I also feel like there is a um, um, opposition when it comes to what one person likes to do recreationally and what the other person likes to do. One person is very, like, down-to-earth, very uh, tried and true. And then the other person is, like, you know, the spectrum of the rainbow, wanting new things. And so in this relationship, I'm sensing here, there's dissonance, okay? It's like not being on the same page, not really jiving with one another anymore, uh, talking and, and living life in different, on different wavelengths, no longer crossing paths or, or no longer feeling like you are in alignment with one another. For some of you, what could have started out as like a very passionate affair could have now settled into a very comfortable relationship. We have here the Two of Cups, okay? This is like a comfortable relationship where two people are comfortable with one, ano one another. Um, this is also like the nesting instinct is what I'm hearing where the two of you might have, you know, uh, moved in together, might have been really comfortable with each other, might have gotten married, might have had a several kids. And so the spark might not be as strong in this relationship as it was in the past. And then I'm also feeling as well, um, for some of you, 
regardless of whether or not you are single or in a relationship, I feel that you are drawn to a person, very, very drawn to a person that is like you, your friends, your family, and the people that know you, like your best friends, would say, wait a minute, that person is completely not your type, okay? So I feel like your tastes when it comes to partnerships and relationships are changing. You're attracted to somebody that in the past might have slipped under the girl radar, but now I feel like you're specifically drawn to this type and you find this type very magnetic and I feel like they're very different from you. And so I feel like you guys are that woman at the coffee shop uh, her significant other is talking to her, but she's she's like checked out, either checked out of that conversation, checked out of that relationship, checked out of that connection, and wishing for something a little bit more. Okay, she's drawn to the artist in the background. He's sitting with his uh, back to her, so she's not really seeing his face, but she's admiring his talent. She's admiring the way that his mind works, where he can you know conjure up beautiful pieces of art and so I feel like you might be drawn to somebody with artistic capabilities who can make magic and and who can make something amazing out of nothing okay the conjuring and the card associated with this here is we have here the page of wands okay this is like the multitasker and this is like, um, you know, the, the cogs in the machine are all turning, right? This is someone who's borderline genius, okay? The way their mind works, uh, they can, like, juggle, like, have many, many, many things in the works, and they never drop the ball. This is somebody whose mind is, like, racing a mile a minute. They come up with new inventive ideas. They're constantly keeping busy, they're constantly on the go, they're constantly like churning out new things. And I also feel like with this energy, they're very exciting, very, um, it's, it's almost like their world is very colorful and very childlike, very innocent and very playful and very exploratory. And so for the, when you're with this person or when you're looking at this person, I feel that you're looking at them when you're looking at this person. I feel like for many of you, you wonder why they, how, not so much why, but how they could, you know, how they could live their life the way that they live their life. How their minds can churn out a million masterpieces or ideas in such a short amount of time, how they could be so smart, how they could get so much inspiration, how they have the time to do everything, how they're always, you know, working on one thing after another. So I feel like you are enthralled and very taken in by this person. And I feel like their energy is really, it's, um, it's really fascinating because I feel like this is someone who's very creative it's like a mad genius, a mad scientist. It's somebody who works with a lot of things. They, they, they could like work with their hands. They could have like, you know, um, have a main job and a side job. They're juggling many, many things and they never skip a beat. They never drop the ball. They never fumble. And yet everything in their life is kind of like a well-oiled machine. Everything is going really well in their life. And you're looking at this person and you're wondering like, how do they do it? How do they do all of this? How do they find the time? And I feel like this is somebody who's really capturing your attention. And this is somebody that you are heavily looking at and wondering, you know. Um, I feel many of you might be admiring this person from afar. I feel that for many of you, this might be like a harboring like a secret crush. I also feel for many of you, uh, you really like this person. You're constantly checking around to see where they are. I literally just saw like some um, some of you who are in school, like in universities, in law school, in med school, in grad school, whatever schooling you are in. Some maybe you're watching this and you're in high school. Um, 
I feel that you're checking around, you know, when there's class, when there are meetings, when there are, when there's recess, when there is even like breaks, you're, you're trying to see where this person is. You're looking around, scanning the crowd, trying to, uh, you know, get a glimpse of this person. So I, I feel that it is the beginning of a very, very big crush that we're harboring for another person here. Um, so that's what I'm sensing. And I do feel um, a little bit that some of you might be in a relationship and you're trying to figure out a way out of it. Um, I feel that you are not emotionally fulfilled in that relationship. And you're thinking about shifting and going out into the world to find someone who's a better fit for you. And it has nothing to do with, you know, how you feel about the previous, the, the existing relationship. I just feel, or the existing or the, pre the, the previous person, it has more to do with the fact that you might have outgrown a relationship. And it might um, be attributed to the fact that, you know, you might have met this person when you were really young, fell madly in love, thought it was the one. But then, you know, life circumstances, um, we, you know, go through different phases in our lives. And we just drift apart and we grow further and further apart. So I feel like it's through no fault of your own. It's also not their fault. It's just the two of you have kind of like reached the end of a relationship. And I do feel for many of you, um, this was like somebody that you met when you were very young and the passion and the chemistry was like off the charts. But as the two of you settle down and get into a relationship and, and have this quiet existence, you might want more out of life, out of your relationship, and they might not. They're comfortable and they're not really trying as hard, okay? And so I feel like only you can decide whether or not it is worth staying in okay because I feel like for some of you it's comfortable and the person is a really good uh, person and so you might opt to stay in uh, ride it out you know get through the rough patches re-inject passion in the relationship but for others of you I feel that the partner is quite stubborn the partner is not really going out of their way to accommodate you you might want to you might want to travel you might want to see the world you might want to have a little bit more fun and every time you ask the partner like hey let's plan date night let's meet up with my friends let's go here let's go there i feel like they just they're a little bit like a stick in the mud and um, they like their their own company they like their own space and they might not be very social and so i feel that you're looking at them and you might want out of this relationship because you might not feel like they're investing in the relationship or they're, they're trying their best to maintain the relationship with you. And so you feel like your life might be more colorful elsewhere, okay? So that's what I'm sensing here. So um, let's talk about your voyage, okay? Because I feel like this zigzag might explain that. So there's a new person coming in that is really capturing your imagination. And some of you might feel like this person is a soulmate, is a kindred spirit, is kind of like a, a lost soul, a connection that you highly, highly respect and highly value. And I also feel that you feel the warmth, a lot of warmth and a lot of passion and inspiration coming from this person. And we have as well the Ace of Wands, okay? So this is like really strong, very, very strong chemistry that you have towards another person. And uh, when I see this card, this is all about like um, the raw instinct, okay? Like the, the animal instinct, okay? Thinking like this. It's like um, fight or flight survival mode and it's just like the raw passion in a relationship or between two people. And it is really strong. So I feel like not only is there there, like a very strong soul connection, but there is also immense passion and uh, chemistry that you feel for another person and they vice versa feel for you. Um, I'm feeling very strong Aries energy, okay? And Aries is your um, polar opposite. 
So whenever polar opposites uh, connect to, there's a lot of strong passion, a lot of strong chemistry, like it is through the roof. It can be sliced with a knife. Everyone in the, uh, in the room will feel it. And so it's not just you, the other person is feeling it too, because I feel like, you know, the energy is reciprocated here. Um, and um, a lot of the times too, when we are dating um, a, a, a polar opposite sign, or there can also, you know, it, it's a great passion and great chemistry, but it can bring a lot of um, incompatibilities, to the surface, okay? So if we're ever dating like an opposite sign, it is very important that we take the relationship very slowly and l look at the relationship objectively rather than through blinders because the passion can cloud our judgment, okay? Make sure that there is a lot more compatibility or make sure at least, you know, if you don't agree on certain things, at least you don't have innate like ideological differences where the relationship will not work. So for example, one person might want an open relationship, another person wants a monogamous relationship. How is that going to work, right? And then, for example, one person might want to settle down, have children, and the other person wants to travel the world. How is that going to happen? How is a relationship going to form? So it doesn't mean that it can't work, it just means you need to take things slowly, get to really know this person before you start planning a life together. Does that make sense? So I feel like you guys are sensible enough, um, but I feel like the, the connection here is very strong and is very desire-based, and that's why I would urge you to try to look at this objectively um, so that you're not swept off your feet, okay? So I definitely feel here, one connection is like on the rocks. It, it's, um, it's hurting. It's drying up. It's uh, shriveling, and I feel that you are wanting to move away, okay? Queen of Swords. Um, the Queen of Swords is, the way I look at it, it's like, it's a woman um, who has been traditionally, you know, she's um, she's been very, very hurt in the past, okay? So I usually look at this card as... Um, Somebody who's been through their fair share of emotional disappointments, okay? One, like a series of emotional disappointments. And as a result of it, this person is very uh, steely. They're a little bit icy. And they don't trust people easily. It's hard for them to open up to new love. And it's also very hard for them to uh, express themselves emotionally, okay? I feel like there was a relationship here in your past where you didn't feel emotionally fulfilled. I also feel like you've told the other person many times, I like it when you do this, and I don't like it when you do that. But for whatever reason, you're very straightforward with them, and you're very clear about what you like and what you don't like. But for whatever reason, it's fallen on deaf ears. Like, you might tell them, I like roses, I like lilies, I like cherry blossoms, and yet, you know, um, event like holidays and major milestones go by, and they never get you those things, okay? It's, it's as simple as someone not listening. And then I also feel like this person is like, for, for example, for your birthday, you wanted to go out, and you're like, I want to go out with my friends, I want to be... Um, you know, with the company of others, and I want to go dancing, and this person is just like, oh, you, you go ahead, you go and, and you know, hang out with your friends on your birthday. Um, I don't want to go dancing. I don't want to, you know, be a, along um, or be amongst, like, a big crowd. But you go ahead. It's your birthday. You go ahead. But that's not the point. The point is you wanted to them to share this experience with you. And for whatever reason, I feel like, they might be a little bit insensitive, okay, in your eyes. But then I'm also feeling in their defense, it's like maybe birthdays mean a lot to you, but it might not mean a lot to them. And so that's why they just want you to have fun. 
And so if they're coming along and not having fun, they don't want you to worry about them. And so that's why they'd rather excuse themselves and remove themselves from the picture. That way you can be with your friends and do the things that you like on your birthday. So I definitely feel like this person, the way their mind works is very, very practical. Whereas your expectations and the things that you want might be a little bit more like... Um, I just want you to share this moment with me. But rather than saying, I just want you to share this moment with me, I feel like it's hard for you to say that. And then I also feel like there is a, a lot of like emotional stifling, or I'm sorry, emotional suppression. Not knowing how to express ourselves emotionally. Not knowing how to ask for what we want. It could be from you or from the other person. Not knowing how to tell the other person to give us what we want. But either way, I feel that some of you might have already cut off this connection. And you're looking for love elsewhere. For others of you, you might still be in this connection where you're not feeling that emotional nourishment and you're contemplating um, cutting off the connection, okay? We have as well, moving in, we have the Three of Swords, okay? So what I was um, looking at earlier is, it's sort of like this. Moths to a flame, okay? Something is really cap like catching your eyes you're really gunning it for something. You're, you're really like going towards something. So just look at a bat, okay? They, um, this is, might not be a fruit bat. This might be more of a carnivore type of a bat where they eat flies, where they eat insects, where, you know, they eat like critters. So like the, the bat is going straight for the moth, okay? So what I'm seeing is there's something, there's a, another person that is... Um, whose presence is kind of like the light in your life. If you're living in a bat cave, it's dark, it's damp, and it's dank, and it's, the scenery is probably not very inspiring. There, there isn't a lot to look at. And overall, it just feels almost as if you need the sunlight, right? And so I feel like you're seeing this person, and everything is shining very brightly. And it feels almost as if you're emerging from this cave and moving into the light. But in the process of moving towards this thing that is really drawing your attention, you have to let something go, hence the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is about that separation. Okay? It's about like the sacrifice. It's about doing something um, that we know will hurt us, but in the long run, it will also be freeing and it will be liberating for us. So, underneath the Three of Swords, we have here the words associated with it. It's release and recovery. Releasing something so you can go after something else. Releasing a relationship that is no longer serving its purpose in your life. And while you're moving away, what's really blocking you here is that it's going to hurt a little bit. Okay, you you might be dealing with this. You might be uh, not wanting to leave because you were fearing this. But look what's on the other side. We have Queen of Swords and we have the King of Swords. And the only thing that's separating them is this distance, is this sacrifice, is this, um, you know, like letting go of a relationship that's no longer serving you so that you can achieve this relationship here with your counterpart that is made perfectly for you. So we have here a match. The Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. When two cards that are court cards of the same suit comes out, and especially the King and the Queen, this is like a preordained connection. This is a soul contract. This is a connection that you have had with each other in a past life. And you're coming into this lifetime to continue to walk through the next phase of your life's journey together. This is a coming together of two people who are very like-minded, who are also incredibly... Um, I feel like compatible. Compatible, okay? Um, I'm seeing for many of you who might be... Uh, 
it's kind of like the the face you bring the the face you project to to the um the people that you work with okay so it's like the way in which you portray your public life the way in which you show up in your profession in your work at the company that you're at with supervisors with um sub with um people who you work under and also with your subordinates and i feel like there's a lot of opportunities here for success okay i also feel there is a situation here where the place you're at is very very stable and let me show you the sun. It's a beautiful depiction. The place where you're at is very, very stable. There's room for growth. You have a lot of people who hold you in a high regard. A lot of people like you. A lot of people seek you out. A lot of people pick your brains. And so you feel like you're uh, in high demand. And you also are very respected. Okay, So in your professional life, you've got a social standing or you've got like a, a reputation that is really you have a really good reputation you have a sterling with something in a trial period a trial phase just to see how it fits but we don't have that luxury and so I do see a lot of temptation here a lot of desire that you have towards something new and I especially see it coming through with another person and you're really looking at this person I do feel that um I feel like you're also living vicariously through them. You're lo you're potentially looking at them through social media, looking at the places that that they've been, looking at you know where they're hanging out, who they're with, and really you know wishing you were there with them. And then I'm also feeling with this Eight of Cups. Um, if we look at the starfish, it's kind of trapped, bogged down by the 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 weight of the the seaweed. Okay. It's kind of like entangled with sea urchins and seaweed, and it's in a, a state where it can't really move, okay? Being immobilized, having so much baggage or having so much stuff where you're kind of tied down. So for many of you, there might be a relationship here that you feel like it's hard to extract. There might be children in the mix. There might be joint finances. There might be, you know, mutual friends, mutual, like, even um, close family members that it's like your family is their family now so it's really hard to extract it's really hard to extricate and so I do feel this new energy is really calling to you and at least you have been trying to manifest it have been trying to call it in for you and it has taken a really long time and now that it is actually here you don't really know what to do you are definitely aware of what your options are Libras I feel that you're totally aware but at the same time, I feel that you take a really long time to make decisions. And I just want to say that this is something you need to speed up on. Because I feel like with all of these, um, it's like all the, all the, the colorful, the newness, the, the, all the, the spectrum of the colors on this side indicates to me, you know, that it's very positive for you. And so when I see something very, very positive here in your future and things that might not be entirely positive here, that's lackluster here and underwhelming here, whereas everything here is really bright and, and, and just delicious and just, you know, warm and very emotionally and physically fulfilling and appealing to the senses, um, I just wouldn't understand why you would not partake in this. Um, I'm hearing, you know, the Lord of the Rings, the, the precious, okay, like um, the ring precious, somebody saying this, this is very delicate, this is very precious to me. And I feel like somebody might be having like a secret crush on somebody and the emotions are very strong and I feel like it's very precious. You don't talk about it. You don't tell anyone. No one knows about it. And so you kind of like hold your feelings and the way you feel about the other person is very precious. You don't want to do anything to hurt them. Okay, two of cups here. This is about caring about another person. Even when they drive us nuts, even when we're really upset with them, 
we still don't want to say anything or do anything to hurt them because we care about them. So someone here is being treated very preciously, which is great. I'm going to leave it at that, Libras. I hope you have the answers that you need, okay? Um, once again, for those who are still emailing me, if you are in this state and you're in need of like spiritual guidance,